Oh, okay. Wen Long Mu will give talk. Yeah, thank right. you. So, hello everyone. I'm Wen Long Mu from UC Berkeley. I'm presenting on behalf of uh, Ying Yuliang and uh, Yuan Zhili because they cannot make it to the conference. So, I'm presenting their work about uh, learning mixture of linear regressions with, with near optimal like complexity. So as we all know, the mixture model is uh, like widely studied object, and it is uh, very useful when your data can be, you know, uh, mod can, can be like modeled by some mixture of uh, simple models. For example, like mixture of Gaussian uh, and mixture and talking modeling. And uh, previous work about uh, mixture models, both in theoretical world and in practical world, are mostly about like uh, enterprise learning. And the focus of this work is to study like mixture model when you work on like supervised learning problems. And we are working on like uh, they are working on a very practical example, which is mixture of linear regressions. So let's come to the uh, problem setup. So suppose you are given like uh, some data points from uh, like k unknown components, and each component, both the design and the response, are coming from uh, the uh, for like for each data you receive design and response, and they are from uh, like uh, some linear regression model, and you have like k components for them. And for each data, you know the design, you know the response, but you don't know like which component it belongs to. And your your goal is to learn the underlying like parameters for each of the components. Okay, it's clear. So. Uh, yeah, so, so here's the setup. We, uh, we assume that uh, the data points are drawn from uh, the ID from the following procedure. You first sample the components, which is from a multinomial distribution, and then you generate the data. Uh, the distribution of each component can be different. So this is uh, like a key difference between this work and the previous work on like a learning mixture of uh, regression models. And uh, then you generate the response, which is uh, noiseless. And, uh, the goal is to learn the parameters. Cool. So uh, their assumptions in their paper is that uh, first, uh, the, the data should be Gaussian and the covariance should be well conditioned. And second, uh, the component, the, like the probability of uh, each component should be lower from bounded from below. And third, third assumption is that the mixture should be well separated. So here comes the main result. Uh, and there are those assumptions, and uh, if you take like a k sigma uh, like delta and the probability of each component to be like constant, you basically get uh, nearly linear depend dependence on dimension in your uh, sample complexity, and you, which is uh, nearly optimal. And you, your time complexity is uh, also nearly optimal because you at least you need to see all the data. And uh, uh, it achieves like global convergence and the dependence on epsilon is uh, log only logarithmic. Uh, it has exponential dependence on number of components, but this is somehow, in, is somehow invisible in many of the mixture models. So uh, let's turn to the technical part. Uh, so the first ob observation is that if you can learn one of the mixture, mo one of the mixture components, you can just, because it's not a less observation, you can just find the points that belong to this, mix, this component, and you remove those points, and you can learn them one by one. So they, you only need to learn, like, it reduced to learning one of the com mixture components. And to do that, uh, they use a two-phase algorithm. Uh, first, the first phase to use moment descent to get a warm start, and then use gradient descent to get an accurate solution, like uh, with only logarithmic dependence on the uh, epsilon. So the second part, uh, you, you can trust me, actually converge like exponentially fast, but we don't have time to discuss this. If you are like very close to the optimal and you, you run a gradient descent, you can prove some local you know, correlation bound for your gradient. And for the first part, this is uh, like the main technical contribution of this paper. And it's also of in independent interest. So uh, uh, the first observation is that if we are at some point, and uh, what we can do, the, the, the random guess is, is that we just uh, add some random noise vector to, to do some random guess around it and to see if we are going to make progress. The way we, we, uh, the way we uh, certify that we are, if there is progress, it's uh, non-trivial, but this is not, it, it is not done in this paper, it's done by some previous work. Because if you, if you draw some fresh new training data and uh, you you look at basically the error, the empirical distribution of the error, 
it is uh, like a mixture of uh, concentric Gaussian in one dimension. And this can be estimated using some previous work by Moitra et al. And uh, then you, you take the component in the mixture of one dimensional concentric Gaussian with uh, smallest, sm smallest variance. And you, if this variance becomes smallest variance becomes sm smaller, you are making progress. And if you just uh, get, add some isotropic Gaussian to, to try and uh, to see if it makes progress, you will make like order of uh, one or D progress for each round, which gives you like worse sample complexity. That's what, not, not what they want. So actually, but you can actually sample from uh, like a degenerate, like a low rank Gaussian. Uh, whose rank is actually k, which is the number of components. And you, you're basically trying to estimate the span of, uh, your, uh, of all the ground truth minus your current iteration point. And how do you do that? Uh, so they come up with some smart way of uh, like moment descent for doing that. Uh, a simple observation, a simpler, wor simpler version is that if you, all the coherence matrix are identity, and uh, you have this observation about the moment times some, some coherence, some, some, some uh, like uh, your, your design vector. And uh, this gives you, by taking expectation, that gives you a span of uh, uh, subspace by wi minus a t. And you use some concentration result to make sure that, okay. You use some concentration result to make sure that it's actually uh, close to what you want. And uh, using this, it, it leads to like an order of uh, one over k progress per iteration. And you repeat the procedure, it doesn't give you additional d factor, uh, and uh, that, that finishes the proof for the uh, warm start. And for the second part, we don't have time to talk about that. It's just some proving some uh, local bounds. And uh, so the conclusion is that. Uh, they uh, show that the algorithm, uh, they show algorithm for learning a mixture of uh, linear regression under that model and achieves the optimal, near optimal sample complexity and the computational complexity in terms of dimension dependence. And the moment descent uh, te uh, technology can be like, of independent interest. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> so we got plenty of time for questions. But there are none. No, there's one. Yeah, so th this method is like uh, if you, so here we are taking like, uh, oh, it's actually going to the, the, the error squared times the xxt. And you are taking like uh, that error to some higher power. And uh, the, the intuition is that uh, you have some, you, you have some mismatch between the coherence matrix. But you somehow use this polynomial to exactly cancel out some, some term that you don't want and amplify the signal you have. Any more questions? Yeah, over there. The separation assumption is that uh, all the, sorry, all the vectors are uniformly bounded in a uniball, and uh, there are some uh, delta separation. Yeah. All right. Oh, one more. Yes, please. Uh, because if you, so the naive guess is like in zero order optimization, you use some, uh, like uh, you add some isotropic Gaussian noise and to see whether you make progress. But this will, for each round, you are going, you are going to make progress of order one or D uh, because of, you know, it's isotropic. It, it spans on in all the directions, but that will lead to like worse sample and computational complexity. To achieve like optimal complexity, you want it to depend on K instead of D. And that's why you use this moment descent to estimate the, 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 the like low rank correct matrix. All right, any more questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank, thank you. you.